This meeting is being recorded. All right, you can go ahead and start. Ready? Yeah. All right, good evening. Uh, good to see you all again. So you, most of you a couple of days ago, so it's been a busy week, but uh, um, understand it's a long day and uh, you know we're excited to, or I'm excited to get to talk to you guys about uh, our draft tonight. So, uh, you know, I think I'll start by saying that I think we've been consistent as we've talked about what we want to do, especially in the draft. Um, and our approach is to be the best player available, uh, add to our team, uh, and use all our assets in the best way we can to to uh, to make the team better now and going forward. Um, I want to thank my front office staff who did a, a fantastic job over not just the last few weeks, but uh, the months and years uh, prepping uh, for this day. Um, you know, we've added every opportunity, explored all options, and I think we ended up uh, in a positive place tonight. Um, you know, I think at the end of the day. With the fourth pick, after uh, exploring all our options, um, we felt extremely comfortable that the best player available was Keegan Murray. And uh, we are extremely excited to, to welcome Keegan uh, to the Kings family. Um, obviously, Keegan, extremely uh, well-rounded player, uh, two-way player, uh, one of the most prolific scorers in the country. Uh, Blocks, steals, rebounds, impacts the game in so many ways. Uh, we talk about versatility, uh, somebody who can play inside, inside and out on offense, somebody who can guard multiple positions on the defensive end, uh, and somebody who uh, was one of the best players on one of the best teams in the country all year long. Um, ultimately, uh, after sitting in the room with, with my front office staff, our, our, our whole staff, our scouting department, our analytics department, uh, became unanimous uh, that Keegan Murray was, was the best player available, and uh, we jumped at the chance to select him. Uh, with our 37th pick, uh, we have agreed in principle to trade the draft rights of that pick to the Dallas Mavericks as part of a larger trade. Uh, the trade is expected to be finalized uh, here in the near future and per league rules, uh, not able to talk any more on that tonight. Uh, and finally, with the 49th pick, uh, we are also thrilled to secure the draft rights to Sasha Vizankov. Uh, Sasha, one of the best players in Europe, first team all Euro League, uh, an incredible three point shooter, 6'9 uh, size, uh, a smart defender, a smart offensive player, uh, somebody who impacts again the game on, on both ends, uh, can stretch the floor. Uh, and has already proven that he can perform at uh, one of the highest levels in the world. So um, we are, we're very excited about what these guys can bring on the court, but of course what they bring off the court, as we always talk about, continuing to bring in the types of people into the building here that uh, are going to turn this thing around and get us back to the playoffs. So with that, uh, I'll take questions. Start right here with Sean. What's up, Money? Hey, Sean. There we go. Sorry. Um, when you look at uh, having the fourth pick when you guys moved up, uh, I imagine you probably heard from a lot of teams regarding that pick. Just uh, what was that process like uh, leading up to today and, and how, uh, I don't know, attractive was it to other teams? Yeah, it's, uh, it was certainly, you know, I think an exciting night, uh, you know, when you make that jump, um, just the, the possibilities that it, that it opens up. And, uh, and my job is to do the due diligence and figure out what I can do move up, move back, move out, uh, sit and pick it. And uh, we certainly explored all those. Uh, but, you know, I think as, as we went along and certainly as we got into the final days, um, you know, it was, it was just apparent to us that uh, if Keegan Murray was there, uh, that was going to be the best course of action for us. So, um, you know, hats off to my, my staff. I mean, uh, we, we, uh, we did a lot of work. Uh, but, uh, you know, when you, when you sit there on the final day and you feel that comfortable, um, you know, it really makes you, you feel uh, confident that you're doing the right thing. So, uh, Monty, you say that, you know, this uh, was a unanimous choice between you and your staff. Uh, of course, you know, Keegan put up tremendous numbers, you know, in the past couple of seasons, 18 minutes a game his first year, but he was a bit awful effective you know, as a freshman, and of course, we all know what he did, you know, during his uh, uh, senior year. And um, 
offensive rebounding, a third of his rebounds from the offensive end, and 68 blocks, uh, 45 steals. Yes, he's probably one of the best two-way players in, in, in this draft um, in the country. When did you know at this point going into the draft that this was your guy? Was it before the draft, during the draft, or just you know right when it was time to pick him? Yeah, well, I guess you, you don't know till till it's your pick. We had we had three picks ahead of us, um, and uh, so you know, not knowing what was going to happen there. Um, but you know, I think we, you know, we became comfortable, very comfortable by the end. That if if the draft went the way that it did ultimately end up going, and like I've said, we you talk about scenario planning. We we literally plan for for every scenario that could happen, especially at four. It's a little easier, uh, but you know, I think. Um, it, it was a culmination of the process. I don't think there was one moment, um, but as we went through, we just became more and more comfortable with uh, with every box that that Keegan checked along the way. And um, when all those things line up, uh, you know, it makes my job easy. Uh, and so that's a, that's a testament to my staff and uh, you know all the work they put in along the way. Um, not just vetting Keegan, but every other prospect and, and trade that we're looking at. And with all respect. Uh, you know, no disrespect at all. Uh, the thing with the Jaden Ivey thing, because there's just been so much talk in the last six weeks, especially the last couple of weeks, about, you know, connecting him with, with the Kings. Uh, is there anything that you can share on him uh, as far as why you, you didn't chose him, at least for the fans? Yeah, no, there's a, <clears throat> there's a lot of good prospects in this draft. There's going to be a lot of good players come out of this draft, but um, – you know, we're certainly here to talk about Keegan and somebody who, um, you know, I would say confidently, which we thought was the best player available at number four. Hey, Monty, uh, Matt George, GBC 10. Uh, we've heard reports of a, a playoff mandate for this upcoming season. How much of this decision for Keegan was about his ability to make more of an immediate impact on this team? And how much of an immediate impact do you expect he can make at 22 when his rookie season begins? Yeah, so I guess those are two separate questions. <laughs> First of all, uh, none. There's no. There's no mandate. We've been. We've been very clear what our goal is. We want to win. We want to make the playoffs, uh, and we want to continue and stay there. But there's no. There's no mandate to do so. My job is to build, as I've said, the best team that's going to take the court this year and for years to come. And uh, uh, so I think Keegan is exactly that player. And, um, you know, I think he's going to be with us for a long time and somebody who's got a very bright future ahead of him in this league, and uh, he's going to contribute for many years ahead. Monty, Mike Wagaman from the Associated Press over here. Keegan's versatility is one of the things that stands out best about him. Do you foresee him, do you guys foresee him, you guys continuing to use his versatility, mixing and matching him with different lineups, or do you want to see him settle into one position and kind of get the best out of him at that one spot? Yeah, I guess ultimately that'll be up to, to Coach Brown uh, and how he wants to utilize him. But I think, uh, you know, what we liked about Keegan was the, that he has the ability to fit into so many different different roles. Uh, and, um, you know, I think that's, that's really what stood out about him, uh, one of the many things. But, um, you know, how Coach Brown ultimately ends up utilizing him, uh, I don't think uh, – you know, I, I think I don't think there's any question that Keegan's gonna gonna have a positive impact on the team. Hi, Monty. Um, there were very few, uh, certainly very few top ten um, caliber picks that came in for workouts, and and um, really only a couple, I think, first round picks. Was it was that something that were there logistical challenges? Is it something philosophically where you, maybe there's just not as much emphasis here um, on, on doing those kinds of things now? No, we certainly value all the information we can get on these guys. Um, but I, I would just point to, like, ultimately, like I said, this is not just, like, the last few weeks that we're sitting in that room. Uh, our scouts have been out there all season. And for some of these guys, for, for many years, we've seen these guys in college, even, even high school all-star games, things like that. So uh, there is just so much information out there now. Uh, you know, certainly the, the more touch points – we can get the better on guys, but um, you know, really, once the time for the draft comes around, we, we have so much video, uh, you know, intel, uh, seeing these guys live, um, you know, talking with with people who've been around them that uh, we feel comfortable uh, with with the person and the player of these guys uh, to a pretty high degree by this point. 
Yeah, Monty, uh, Keegan Murray has gotten a little bit of a, a label of a low ceiling, and I'm curious what your response is to that and, and what you view as kind of his ceiling throughout the NBA. Yeah, it's, uh, um, it's funny. Uh, I won't name names because the NBA probably would not like that, but uh, I, would, I would say go back and look at some guys who people thought had low ceilings. And uh, I don't know how you would say that about a guy who – Led the led the country in in points scored. Uh, who, like uh, Tony said over here, had uh, the steal, block, rebound uh, numbers that he does. Um, you know, I think Keegan in the Big Ten, the best conference in the country, uh, being one of the most productive players. Um, you know, all season long uh, against some of the toughest competition. Um, we don't see it that way. Uh, we think Keegan has an extremely high ceiling. We think he's going to come in here uh, and, and prove that to everyone. And, uh, you know, I'm sure he's excited, and I'm excited to see it. Um, can you talk about a little, a, a little bit about his uh, dynamic uh, features that, that he has? You know, kind of list them if you could. Yeah, I think uh, Keegan was – I'm going to get the stat wrong, but uh, his dunk – like dunk's one of the, one of the highest uh, dunk rates – uh, for his position in college, uh, a fantastic transition player. We talk about wanting to play fast here, um, and certainly that's something that we can emphasize, but we also got to get players that can do it. And uh, we know we've got a few of those on our roster already, uh, and Keegan's, Keegan's another one. Uh, I think um, he, he is very smooth with his game, and uh, maybe that lulls people to sleep, but uh, a guy who dunks the ball, runs in transition, rebounds the ball, blocks, steals. All these things indicate uh, a dynamic player with athleticism, with skill, uh, with all those things. So I, I don't know exactly why people uh, see that. Maybe those are some of the reasons. But uh, we feel confident in, uh, in not just his production, but his, his dynamism. Hey, Monty. Sarah Hodges, CBS 13. How you doing? Um, we know that you guys have, over the years, needed help on the defensive end. And how big, um, I guess, of that was a factor in the process? And how much of a, a good defense do you see out of Keegan and just the fact that he's been a pretty good two-way player throughout college? Yeah, we, um, you know, we certainly want to improve our defense. But I, I think for the draft, we, we really focus on what the best player available is because this is the time that we can get somebody that's going to be with us for a long time uh, and not just plug a hole. You know, I think, uh, you know, certainly we've talked with, you know, I've talked with Coach Brown, his staff. Uh, we all know we need to improve the defense, um, you know, even more, certainly more than we did this year. And, uh, and I think Keegan will be a part of that. But that is, uh, in the draft process, we, we try not to make that a part of it. You know, we're, we're really looking uh, not just at this year, but five, ten years down the road. Uh, just kind of two quick ones a minute ago, kind of following up on the draft process and guys coming in here, knowing that you you know were able to have information and intel that you wanted to see. Was it discouraging at all to see so many not be able to come to Sacramento for whatever reason? And what kind of challenge does that pose for you as you do do your evaluations? Yeah, I think uh, there's uh, we, we've seen this. I think with with a lot of things, the combine, fewer guys play, fewer guys test, all these things. Um, so it, it's just a part of the a part of the process these days. And uh, but what counterbalances that is all the other inf information out there. I mean, when I when I started in the league, uh, you know, Phil Jabor, who's our our vice president of player personnel, was in our video room all day every day, just making sure we had two games on a guy on every prospect. And now, the day after every game, we have we have it at our fingertips. So um, you know, there's there's so much more information in that way. Uh, the world, you know, to, is so much more connected. Our, our guys do a fantastic job of, of finding people who have been around these these guys, uh, so we know what kind of people they are. Um, and uh, you know, certainly all else equal, we, we want uh, you know as many touch points as we can. But you know, there's we, we feel fantastic about um, our preparation and the information we've gathered, and um, you know, our ability to, to touch these guys in many different ways. Monty, you uh, you guys have been pretty clear that you wanted to, to add size, length, defense, shooting. Um, Keegan addresses pretty much every area that, that you guys have talked about. So I, I hear you when you're talking about best player available, but was there also an element of of fit and, and readiness uh, for him that, that maybe pushed you in that direction some? No. I mean, it was uh, 
I, I guess certainly a nice uh, a nice bonus. But no, we uh, we have conversations at the beginning of of every draft process. Um, we talk with our group about the difference between the opportunity the draft gives us, especially at the top, uh, versus you know the other the other you know kind of free agency trade other other things that we can do to the team, um, and uh, and what our focus is. And, um, you know, certainly, yeah, we love it when it all lines up. But, um, you know, for us, it's we are solely focused on the best player because, like I said, this is our chance for not just a guy that's going to help us this year, but five, ten years down the road. We don't we don't know exactly what the roster will be like. We just want the guy who's going to be the best player out there. Uh, Monty, I just want to go back, go back to uh, what you had said before about the competition level that uh, Keegan has been in there because the Big Ten – Big Ten was full of stars. I mean, you know, with Johnny Davis in Wisconsin, Trace Davis in Indiana, uh, Kofi Coburn in Illinois, uh, the Lion, you know, Liddell, Ohio State. But what's your thoughts about how Iowa developed this this kid in those first two years? Because he only played 18 minutes the first year. Then, boom, he just came out of nowhere, and he took the team, you know, to the Big Ten tournament, and they won it and stuff. What's your thoughts about that program developing him to get to the Sacramento Kings. Yeah, whether it was the the program, Keegan, I'm sure a combination of, of all of it. Uh, but, you know, I think we, we all know the year that Keegan had this year, um, you know, and it was fantastic. But uh, Keegan's somebody that was on our radar last year, uh, even though he had a smaller role. Um, the things he does on the court show up even, even in smaller samples. And uh, so... You know, the fact that he took it to the heights he did this year is certainly a testament to him and the program, but it's also things that we saw, uh, you know, the beginnings of last year. And uh, that just gives you even more confidence that, you know, this guy was able to impact it in a smaller role off the bench and then come in and be uh, the go-to star they needed this year when we, he was given a bigger role. Um, and uh, the fact that he continues to grow like that, um, you know, is another positive uh, as we look into his future. Uh, Tom Diarigger with NBC Sports. Um, <clears throat> you mentioned multiple times of your comfort level leading up to the draft that if Keegan was there at four, you'd take him um, because you checked off some boxes. What were some of those boxes, uh, both on and off the court, that he checked off for you? Yeah. Um, you know, I think I'll, I'll start with just the, the the human, the person that we that we found Keegan to be. Um, you know, incredible worker, incredible competitor. Um, you know, humble but confident off the court. Um, a, you know, universally loved teammate. Um, you know, that that's one, I think. As I'd mentioned, like, the fact that our scouting staff and our analytics staff um, line up on this, that gives me more confidence. Uh, and then somebody who obviously checks all the production boxes, but, you know, as, as to the earlier question, but our scouts see that, see that he can continue to grow. Um, and that's, you know, not just something that, you know, maybe um, he had a good year or something like that. Like, you know, all those as all those things line up uh, and like I said, you keep checking those boxes. It's, you know, it, it just it gives you so much confidence. Chris Savars with Fox 40. There are the reports that Keegan went out to lunch or dinner with Fox and other guys from the team. How much of a role did did your conversation with those guys after that dinner have in, in your thought process or your, your scouting of him? And also, what does it just say about the relationships he's already trying to build with guys before he even knew he was going to be coming here? Yeah, it's just a, a, another, you know, layer on top, right? And, uh, you know, a lot of this is, is just continue to get to know the prospect and uh, seeing his comfort level with, with our people um, and, you know, showing him what we're all about. Right, and having having our our front office staff, our coaching staff, some of our players, uh, a, a lot of our other staff, touch him, you know, show him the facilities, all these things, um, you know, and seeing how he handles that, uh, and just spending time, you know, uh, like I said, and on top of all the other information, it's just uh, it's just another positive. Yeah, hey, Monty, you talked a little bit about Sasha. Is is he someone that you expect to be a player for you next season? And if so, how do you envision him kind of meshing with this roster? Yes, yeah, start by saying that, that Sasha, um, certainly the, the, the intrigue with him is, uh, you know, his size with his shooting. Um, somebody who's who's hit threes at a high clip but also can play make and 
you know, just shows his feel out there on the court. Um, and I think, you know, the fact that he's done it at, at arguably the the next best, the second best league in the world, um, you know, at a, an age where he's just entering his prime, um, you know, is we love to see that. And, and again, another one like I pointed to, I'll keep pointing to like this, the fact that when, you know, our, our scouting department, our analytics, our strategy group, um, you know, our intel, all these things line up, and he's another guy that it did for. And um, so, you know, being able to acquire his rights, and we'll, you know, we'll see what we do going forward. But just another guy that we're excited to welcome to the Kings. Uh, Monty, when you think of just this being the first step of the offseason, you know, draft, and then you kind of go into free agency offseason, whatever that looks like, how do you kind of take the shape going forward in terms of what you need and, and kind of a addendum to that? Does it make it difficult knowing? Kind of your own situation, not having a whole lot of clarity beyond maybe this final year you're about to step in. Do you have confidence that that will play a role at any point? No, we have our, our group. We have the ultimate confidence in what we're doing. Uh, this is, you know, I guess step one of the off season. We got uh, a busy few weeks ahead, and um, we we know our job. Our job is to go out there and and build the best Sacramento Kings team we can. And uh, you know, we we think we certainly took another step tonight. Uh, we're going to continue that over the next few weeks, and uh, you know our group does a does a great job. I'm glad we have a, a little bit of a normal off season. Uh, you know, a few days before free agency starts instead of you know 18 hours or whatever it was the last couple of years. But um, but yeah, no, it's you know it's just another another chance uh, for us to to keep building. And uh, you know we haven't reached our our goal yet, like we talked about, but uh, we feel well on our way. And, um, you know, we're excited about all the pieces that are that are coming together right now. All right, let's go to Zone two more. Uh, Christos, go ahead. Thank you for your time, first of all. Uh, I would like to ask about Sasa. How good fit he can be in this team? Because he has size, he can shoot, he can play defense. He showed it this season in EuroLeague. Are you planning to talk with him directly about the next season or to share your thoughts about him? Are you planning? Talk with him uh, directly on the next days. Yeah, I think we've we, we talked about um, you know at the end of the season. I think about wanting to add shooting was being a priority, uh, and so to add, go and add one of the best shooters, you know, who's got you know great positional size um, in one of the best leagues in the world, uh, who's already producing. You know, that was that 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 made it easy for us, and, and I think uh, Sasha's a guy we see. We see fitting with, uh, you know, with Domas's passing, with Fox's ability to, to collapse defenses. Um, just another guy that can stand out there and hit shots, and and we all know how important that is in the league <laughs> these days. We all, we all just saw the playoffs, so um, you know we're we're excited about the fit, um, and uh, you know we'll we'll we'll, we'll uh, talk more with him and, and see where we're at. But uh, you know somebody that um, I know. Uh, you know, we, we know can play at a high level, and that uh, that excites us. Cameron, last question. Hey, Monty, I know you've been a big believer in drafting best player available. When you're going through your draft evaluation process, how do you determine or what characteristics stand out when determining who goes to top your draft board? Is the process different picking up four compared to picking layers in your draft like you guys have the last two years where guys kind of fall there with respect to top? Yeah, I would say, um, you know, when you're w w when we say best player available, we're looking at uh, at guys who, you know, it, it's more, uh, especially with with, you know, college prospects, right? You're you're projecting them uh, from a young age and what they'll do uh, over hopefully a long period of time, and so a lot of it is is the the projection aspect, which is maybe different than some of the other transaction periods we have. Uh, which are a little more near term, and so um, you know, so a lot of it. That's why we talk so much about like who who is this person because they're going to come in, they're going to need to continue to improve their game, they're going to need to fit into a different environment, uh, they're going to need to to battle through things, uh, you know, in their NBA career, um, and that on top of what have they shown they can do, and but also what do we think they can continue to do, um, and so you know, and looking at that through multiple lenses. Um, you know, our scouting lens, our analytics lens, our intel lens. And, um, you know, and again, when those line up, uh, feel great. When they don't, we do more work and, uh, you know, and then continue to set our board. And 
um, you know, certainly at the top of the draft is is just an exciting chance to add somebody who uh, you know who can be a really impact player for a long time. And I think with Keegan, we feel uh, extremely excited about that. Thank you, guys. Thanks all.